This man killed his family, and the next best thing he could do was to announce his evil deed online. What happened here? What made him act this way? Let's answer all the lingering questions as we dive into this video. Menhaz was a responsible child, with a youthful, glasses-wearing appearance. He was the favorite child of his parents, and his mother showered him with affection. Menhaz was extremely shy around strangers. He spoke softly and stuttered, often avoiding eye contact by looking down at his shoes. He preferred to be alone at school. He was a good student who took physics, chemistry, and math classes to meet the requirements for an engineering program, as his father desired. He concealed his emotions well, never showing any signs of sadness or anger in his consistent demeanor. Menhaz found a game called Perfect World, which is a multiplayer role-playing game in 3D. The players of Perfect World Void, a private gaming server, are extremely dedicated. Menhaz, a player, made friends with users from Israel, Belgium, and Tunisia on this server. They would come together to play games, chat, and share jokes. Menhaz expressed his gratitude by sharing with a fellow player that he had made friends on the forum whom he could have conversations with. The home life of the Zaman's family kept getting worse. In 2017, Monaroos was taken into custody for stealing items from a Canadian tire store located in Markham. However, the charges against Monaroos were dismissed after he agreed to complete community service instead. Melissa decided to temporarily leave her parents' house and move in with her boyfriend, which made her parents very upset. Menhaz was becoming increasingly isolated, but he was still highly regarded by his family. He felt a heavy burden of their expectations on him. Momotaz would often boast to her friends about her son's achievement. Menhaz was feeling lost without his family's knowledge. He was becoming disenchanted with Islam and started referring to himself as an atheist on the internet. He spent a lot of time playing Perfect World Void. Some of his friends claimed that he would continue playing even after they logged off to sleep at night, and he would still be playing when they logged back on the next morning. He began skipping classes during his first year at York. He lied to his parents, claiming he had received a full scholarship and achieved outstanding grades, when in reality he was failing his courses and planning to retake them in the second semester. In the end, he decided to leave school completely. Instead of being honest with his parents and facing their disappointment, Menhaz chose to create a complex lie. For several months, he would put his laptop in his backpack every morning, leave his parents' house, and walk down Castlemore to the bus stop on 16th Avenue. He would board the 7 a.m., go bus, reach the campus, and then spend hours walking around the school premises. He would go to a gym near his house in the afternoons to work out before going home. He performed his new routine at home just as smoothly as he did with the old one. If his parents ever had any suspicions, they never showed it. As time went by, Menhaz continued to leave his house at the usual time every day, but he no longer took the bus all the way to York. Instead, he would disembark at Markham's Markville Mall. Menhaz was not considered a failure in his online world. In Perfect World Void, he played as an elf cleric. His role was to heal other players, and he had a reputation for being a skilled player. In the forums, he appeared as an avatar wearing angel wings, and he freely shared his opinions without any restrictions. He claimed that his social difficulties were due to autism, a diagnosis that most of his friends doubt he actually had. He referred to himself as the most famous autist in the game. Menhaz opened the Discord app, which is used by gamers to chat, and started talking to a friend. Menhaz mentioned that he wants to quit playing the game. When his friend asked him where he would go instead, he replied, I would go to jail in a perfect world. I am planning to harm my parents and end up in jail, my friend. His friend didn't seem to be bothered by it. People on the forums frequently made dark jokes. Menhaz was a troll who took pleasure in using homophobic slurs and making negative comments about religion, including Islam. After a few months, he received a suspension from Discord that lasted for a couple of weeks. This was due to him making offensive comments. Menhaz was aware that he would never be able to inform his parents about his decision to leave school. He would never be forgiven. He would have to find an alternative method to escape from his difficult situation. Soon, he began to imagine harming his parents. 
he dedicated three years to devising a plan for accomplishing it. Menhaz informed his parents that he would be graduating with a mechanical engineering degree on July 28. They had been looking forward to the ceremony for weeks, excitedly sharing with their friends how proud and happy they would feel watching their son walk across the stage with his diploma. He woke up with a very intense pain in his stomach on July 27, the day before he was supposed to graduate. He felt pain in his stomach while attempting to eat. The person felt sad when their father went to work an afternoon and evening shift as a cab driver. They also felt sad when Melissa, who was studying science at York, left to work her part-time job as a cashier at the nearby Food Basics. The police have chosen not to provide any comments on the case, and Menhaz, through his lawyer, has declined interview requests. However, a family friend who later visited the house was able to gather information about what seems to have happened. Feroza, who had her own flat in Toronto, was visiting the family for the weekend. They both fell asleep together in the main bedroom. Menhaz entered his parents' room holding a crowbar. According to reports, he supposedly glanced at his mother, lifted the crowbar above his head, and struck her with it. According to the source, he then proceeded to assault his grandmother. After thinking that they were both dead, he placed them next to each other on the pink carpet and then went back to using his laptop. I killed mom and granny so far, waiting for sister in five minutes and dad in one hour, he typed into a chat window on Discord. A few minutes later, Melissa entered through the front door. Allegedly, Menhaz hit her on the head with a crowbar, causing her to bleed on the floor. The woman was still wearing her name tag, which was pinned to her Kelly Green polo shirt from the grocery store. Menhaz went back to his laptop and started chatting with his friends on Discord again. At around midnight, he noticed the headlights of his father's taxi pulling into the driveway and heard the garage door creaking open. He left his computer and went to the garage to confront his father. It is said that he used the same crowbar he had used to attack other members of his family to hit his father. It is believed that, at a certain time, he used a kitchen knife to cut the throats of all four members of his family possibly to make sure they were dead. In September of 2020, Zaman entered a guilty plea to four counts of murder, including three counts of first-degree murder and one count of second-degree murder. In November of that year, he was given a sentence of life in jail without the possibility of parole for the next four decades. When it came time for him to be sentenced in October of 2020, he addressed the court as follows. I would like to just apologize to anyone I have impacted negatively with my actions, especially to the people who knew my family, friends and loved ones who I know could have never seen something like this from me happening. I am sorry. For the first-degree murders of Begum, Moni Ruz, and Melissa, Zaman's attorneys jointly recommended that he be sentenced to life in prison with a 25-year period, during which he would not be eligible for parole. This proposal was made during the sentencing hearing for Zaman. In light of the fact that it was difficult to ascertain whether or not Mamtaz's murder was premeditated and purposeful, he argued that Menhaz should serve an additional 15 years in prison without the possibility of parole for the murder of Mamtaz in the second degree. When Menhaz reaches the age of 64, he will finally be eligible for parole consideration. Should he be granted parole, he will be prohibited from possessing firearms for a period of 10 years and will be required to provide his DNA to a registry. This case should be a guide for parents. Being extremely judgmental could ruin your children's lives. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to this video.